Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be diving into a manufacturing video segment. Uh, we're going to be going through several of those video segments through our YouTube channel, so please be sure to subscribe, like, forward on any videos that you like uh, to other people that uh, are colleagues, business partners, whatever it may be. Uh, my name is Ben Baxter and I'm going to be walking through the Dynamics NAV manufacturing process for a make to stock item. So I've gone ahead and set up an item and we'll walk through some of the characteristics of that. Uh, in my case it's a sub-assembly, this could also be a finished good product, but it is a manufactured product. So uh, one of the key parts, parts of the system is the replenishment system and that needs to be set to production order or prod order. In my case it is a make to stock item with its own routing number and bill of material number. In my case they also match the item number but they do not have to. Uh, and then the last step uh, for automating the creation of this uh, production order is the reorder policy down on the planning tab. And so I have mine set for fixed reorder quantity. There are several options there uh, and we'll be going through each of those different options in each video uh, within this manufacturing uh, video segments. Uh, so please uh, look into those, watch some of the other videos and we walk through each of the different reordering policies. Uh, I have this one set on fixed reorder quantity uh, with a reorder point of 100. Now that means when the stock level of this part falls below 100, we are going to make in this quarter reorder or produce 200 units. So I want to have the system create a production order for me for 200 units. So it will make 200 as soon as we fall below the uh, reorder point of 100. And if I look on my right, my supply and demand, I have nothing uh, on either supply or demand, so a net available of zero. Uh, so in that case, it will tell me, because I'm below 100, to make 200. Now if I had 101 and I sold two and I dropped to 99, then it's going to tell me to produce 200. So uh, regardless of where it is, as soon as it falls below that reorder point, it will tell me to make 200 more. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at this item. Uh, I do have a bill of material, we'll dive into that uh, just so you can get a quick view. All of the component parts are uh, stock parts that we would buy. I did use a routing link code. We'll talk more about that in other videos as well. Uh, but for now, just understand that there are components. They're all 80,000 number range, and, and I'll show you how I filter to those uh, in just a little bit. Uh, we do have a uh, routing in place, so it'll go through, uh, in this case, four different machine centers or work centers uh, with different setup and runtime uh, for those operation. So that's enough on the item. Uh, let's walk through how the system actually uh, gets me to the point of creating a production order for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my worksheets and I'm going to go ahead and click on my planning worksheet and open up the batch. Now I'm in a default batch, you may have others. Uh, we may make a video segment just on journal batch names and how you can uh, run that. Uh, so now that we're in the planning worksheet, we're going to go ahead and calculate a regenerative plan. Uh, there's a lot of information. We may also make a video on the different uh, options within the planning worksheet itself because there are about three, three different options that you can pick from. In this case, we're going to do the regenerative plan and we're going to do both the MPS and MRP uh, and we'll have actually another video just covering those two so keep a keep a look out on the channel make sure you su subscribe to the videos look through them uh, a lot of great content in there uh, I could run this wide open it'll pick it up but it also pick up a lot of uh, additional demand I want to keep this video pretty focused so I'm going to go ahead and filter uh, my filter was on the description so I'm going to move it over to the number uh, and that's the item I want now I also want to pick up my component demand so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bar in and I'm going to start typing and I'm going to slide my filter over to the number range and I'm going to start with 8001 or 80001 I'm going to pet my little uh, two dots and it's going to pop up again and say what's the next number and I'm going to start filtering again uh, and I'm going to go all the way down because uh, I know what my components are within the 80,000 number range I don't know which ones uh, so I'm just going to uh, 
include the entire range within my uh, calculate regenerative plan here. And so what this is doing is it's looking through uh, specifically the uh, make to stock item that we're covering as well as the uh, components and I don't know exactly which one so I uh, included the entire range and it's looking within this starting date and ending date pl uh, planning horizon uh, is it going to fall below the uh, reorder point and in this case we know it is uh, the components that I have for this item are all set up to be um, make to order or purchase to order so it will buy them based on uh, the demand for this item so when I need to make one it's going to order additional components to fill that so a very lean uh, process on that so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK it runs through that process and now you can see I have my uh, make to stock item a quantity of 200 so like we said it fell below the reorder point of 100 with a reorder quantity of 200 so now we're making a production order this is that prod order we covered on the item and it's going to be for that quantity uh, and then you see all of the components that were on the bill of material for that. How do I know that this is related to that item? Uh, the system has great order tracking. So if I click on order tracking, it tells me, hey, there's a line in the planning worksheet uh, that is making the demand for this. Well, how do I know which one it is? I simply say show, and it's going to say your item 3010 requires a certain amount so in this case a one-to-one -one, because I know this is making 200 the components gonna be for 200 so that's where that demand is coming from I can do that on any of these items say order tracking and it'll tell me exactly what line in this case the only line uh, outside of the components that is generating demand so even though uh, I haven't created the production order for this yet it knows that I'm going to need to buy this material in order to produce that and the dates uh, reflect that so our, our our order date or our start date for this production order is the 29th and I have a one day safety lead time so I know that uh, for these items I need to order it by the 28th so that they come in on the 29th so that I can start when I expect to start for this uh, production order and then I look down here I have some that are on the second uh, that's where the routing link code comes in because those are linked to a later operation they're not needed right away so it's very date sensitive takes into a lot of uh, planning parameters and and ways of uh, making the system very very lean very date specific so uh, whether you use that or not it's capable of doing that um, but right, right now the system's telling me, hey, we're going to create a bunch of new purchase orders and a production order. Uh, now these may be to the same vendor we'll go have a look at. So they're all to the same vendor. So it will be one purchase order and one production order. Uh, and as soon as those materials come in, they should come in in time for us to go ahead and start on that production order. So we're going to uh, say carry out the action message and it's going to ask me what kind of production order do I want to make in this case I want to say firm plant it's not released yet because uh, I'm going to wait for that material to come in there's a good chance that vendor could say uh, it's going to be a two week delay so I want to uh, be aware of that as well uh, and in this case I'm going to go ahead and just make the per, uh, purchase orders we'll cover some of these options in a lot more detail later um, but in this case we're just going to uh, create those so now we're carrying out the action. It's going to create both the production order and the purchase order. Uh, in this case, just one because they're all from the same vendor. Uh, and then it's going to clear out my worksheet for me. So what it's doing is it's generating two other aspects of my system, cleaning out my worksheet, uh, and now other people. So if I was the purchaser, other people can start doing work. And we will walk through uh, the actual processing of a production order in other videos. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that uh, the Dynamics NAV product can very much handle make to stock items and replenishment. Uh, we didn't even cover all of the uh, additional options that are available, such as using a forecast, such as using um, other planning uh, parameters to come into play, such as safety uh, stock what kind of dampener periods, reorder policies. Uh, we're going to cover all of that in all of the different videos that we have on our YouTube channel. So again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like our videos, uh, and please, uh, if you do like them, share them. Uh, let other people know that this information is out there and available. So for that, I'm going to stop, and uh, hopefully you'll 
uh, click on a video link to some of our others to see how you actually process through the production order now that it's been created. Thank you very much.